All right, guys, we're gonna do a public flasher uh, in a brown color scheme. So this is kind of what the finished product will look like. It's a good, um, I would say it's a good triple joint uh, streamer. Lots of rubber, lots of flash. Uh, deer hair head, marabou body. And like I said, it's got two hooks and it's got that triple joint in the middle. So what we're gonna start with is this is gonna be a size one to one hook, double hooks, uh, B10S, uh, gamkatsus. And then what we're gonna start with is a uh, metallic brown hairline plummeting tungsten bead. I'm gonna put that on there. Um, and then what we're gonna do is probably take 10, 11 wraps of this lead wire just to anchor that in. Push that up in there. pretty good. Get my thread out and we're going to be prepping obviously on this one the first hook uh, and then we're going to start with the rear hook. So I'm going to anchor this down with a touch of thread. Make sure these guys are in tight so that bead doesn't slip once we finish it off. Get a base. And what we're going to do on this first hook, um, we're going to create just a, I guess I would say your typical articulation loop we're going to use. Um, on this one we're going to use some 30 pound mono, just some good hard mono. I'll tie this in. Um, I like to just get it right up on top of the hook, work it up a ways. I'll double it back just a touch just to make sure we don't get any slippage with a few wraps. Give it a good coat of thread. A couple half hitches. We're done. At this point, I'll usually hit it with some zap just to make double sure we don't have any slippage on that joint. And then I'll plug this thing in um, on a piece of foam or somewhere else that I'll let that dry as we're finishing up the, uh, the other two pieces of this fly. So as we work into the trailer hook, uh, same, we're gonna use a B10S number one, I'm gonna put that in the vise. Um, nice thing about this pattern, and, and really the intention is just to create something that's uh, big, um, but also something that's relatively easy to, to fish, something that's relatively easy for, uh, for a caster to be working with um, all day long. You know, you look at a lot of the articulated patterns, um, and frankly, they're all just super cool. Some really awesome stuff out there, but um, I think the goal is to be able to create some volume, um, but without creating the actual weight um, through you know through kind of that water logging that happens with some of these big patterns. So I'll get some thread base on there. Um, we're going to be working, like I said, with the brown color scheme. I'm going to take just some real dark brown, some tobacco brown marabou. I'll pull a couple of these off. And this is going to be really the main part of the fly as we work through, um, you know, basically a tail, a wing. I'm going to bu just bust this right off, flatten it out. Um, like to do a tail, kind of like a bugger tail, roughly about the length of the shank. I'll anchor this guy down. Um, looks like that's going to be tight. Clip it. I do leave some room up here because I like to try and get this uniformed. I'll just palmer a few wraps up couple back does not need to be neat obviously this is going to get covered up as you see what we do with the uh, with the remaining chenille and then I'm going to start working on a uh, tailing material I'm just using uh, silly legs uh, they're called silly legs, legs chrome I use it in the color that's called copper slash black so it's just a really neat uh, barred leg you can see just kind of what we're going to be working with here um, I use this in lieu of flash abu or crystal flash We'll have plenty of that up at the front, but all I'm gonna do is tie this material in uh, right on top of the marabou tail. You can see how I'm gonna split it. I don't even bother with cutting the legs yet. I'll tie a couple in on the side. Uh, see how those just kind of flare out, anchor it down, and then, um, then I'll just flip the thing over. Flip it right over to the other side, anchor it down with some supporting wraps. And usually when I do these rubber legs, um, if I wanna save, you know, some material I can maybe get a couple of flies per leg instead of this, but for the sake of just going through the video, I wanted to make double sure that we have um, just a really good uh, proportion on here. So I trim my legs back just a touch more so they extend past the marabou tail. So we'll give them a clip. 
you know, the next couple things we're gonna do here is this. We'll anchor it down, and then I'm gonna start working with another material. This one's called Senio Aqua Veil Chenille, and color's called Peanut Brittle. Really neat stuff. It's kind of a mix of that copper and black. Uh, I'm gonna cut a chunk of this off, and you'll see um, as we start putting this in for the body, it's really gonna be using kind of a method I've used on a lot of the other flies that you guys will see through catch. Uh, whether it's the high-resolution buggers or some of the musky stuff that will be coming out. Um, just using a good, and I'll call it a filler material, something that's got good flash, um, can still push a little bit of water, but it's something that's synthetic, so it's not going to soak the water. Um, quite like wrapping, you know, maybe like when you guys do something, you know, along the nature of maybe just a bunny leech, that can get pretty heavy. So I'm going to anchor some of this in right at the bottom. And what I'll do is this. I typically will add just a layer, just a little bit of zap, just to make sure that this isn't going to slip. Because you'll see how we palmer this, just like any other pattern that uh, that I do. But we're going to wrap this, build a somewhat, I would say, voluminous body uh, with the chenille. Side by side wraps all the way up to the front. Careful not to get too much of that zap on it, otherwise you'll end up with just a hard mess. Uh, I think I got just the right amount on there so it'll anchor it down, but doesn't make anything too messy. Give it a snip. That looks pretty good. At this point it looks relatively messy, pretty shaggy. Um, I'll let it dry for just a second because I don't want to create it, like I said, I don't want to create a hard glue mess here. So what I'll do is as that dries, I'm going to grab one more strand of Marabou. Uh, and then we're going to grab one more batch of rubber legs. And this is going to be essentially, as, as we finish up the, the remaining two sections of the fly, um, we're going to be doing something pretty similar to this throughout the rest. So as this dries off, I'll pull it back. Maybe just wet your finger a touch. I can get that anchored down. Now all of a sudden I've got something that's kind of buggerish, kind of streamerish. Looks really good. Um, got some volume. And I'm going to tie in one more plume up top. Wet that down, touch, make sure it doesn't get too messy. Um, just like with any other, maybe just a hair wing streamer, marabou streamer, you can see how that'll extend. Uh, not quite to where the, the tail is. I'll anchor it down, give it some support wraps. You know, since it's an articulated pattern, you're not going to see much of the connection. It doesn't have to be too pretty. Um, I want it to look good as we finish this up, so I'll try and get a nice, clean. Uh, head on here. I think the more important part of having the clean head is that you don't have it all gunked up in the eye because I've still got to connect this to a shank and I want it to wiggle um, as freely as possible. So I've got that tied down. Now it's time to add a couple legs. We'll just double this up like we did with the uh, with the tail side by side. Same set of rules. Uh, so it's going to be once you figure out the first step you'll you'll know all the remaining steps very easy. Double it up side by side. Um, make sure it's anchored down real good, and then I'm going to trim this uh, just like the last one so it extends just past uh, the wing itself. Looks good. I'm going to whip this a couple of half inch. I think that'll work out just fine for a trailer hook. Um, I might even just hit it with just a touch of zap up here. I don't want to have the thing come apart. These take a little bit of time, so I don't want to lose. Don't want to lose my work on just one or two fish, um, one or two rocks, one or two sticks. So I think that looks pretty good as far as my trailer goes. I'll let him dry off. Um, we're going to put a shank on this trailer hook. And I'm just using the regular fish skull articulated shanks, just a 20 mil, just a smaller one. I'll feed it through so you can see what I've done here. And what I'll do is I'm going to insert this shank into the vise. So you'll want to use a pretty heavy set of jaws. You don't want to damage, obviously, a fine set of midge jaws or something like that. Um, I'm using a Revolution vise. I've even used just some of uh, even some of the older Griffin vises. Just something that's got a you know a fairly robust set of jaws. Um, looks good. I can hold that in there. This is going to be a pretty fast and easy step. So as I've got the shank in, uh, I'll do exactly uh, what we did before. Coat with thread. And I want to make sure this is coated real well because i got to close up. Um, 
that gap between the wire connections here. I like that. Probably just break that off. I like that. I'm gonna grab some more of the uh, Aqua Chanel. And what we'll do is we're gonna basically just duplicate how we made the body, <coughs> excuse me, on the uh, on the tail fly. Tie some of this in. Oops, I'll clip him off. Might hit it with the zap just a touch. And then I'll polymer this one. Also to the front of that shank. Looks pretty good. Um, we'll give turns here and then we'll cut it off. Next step we'll end up doing the same thing with the marabou wing. this to extend over the top of that trailer wing so gonna have a little bit of length on there Okay, now on to uh, our first hook. So I've got a good middle joint here. I've got a good trailer hook. You guys can see really kind of what we're forming up here on the public flasher. I think this is gonna be a good looking streamer. Um, last steps is we just need to uh, grab our first hook. We're gonna put that in the vise. Now, we had plenty of time to let this dry off, so that's good. This thing is uh, ready to go. Get him in the vise. I'm going to use just one bead to space this. Um, just one. I'm just using regular old plastic six mil beads on there. And then we're going to do this just like we do with any other articulation uh, streamer. Double him up, thread it through. Coat that with thread. Looks like I've got some plenty of room here between the shank, the hook, and the articulation loop. And all I'm going to do is this. The remaining part of this fly we'll use 
Uh, essentially, we'll use about three more uh, of these marabou plumes, some more of the aqua chenille, some rubber legs, and we're going to build a deer hair head, uh, and then we're going to be largely done with this pattern. So I'm going to pick a couple of good ones, and for the tail, I um, want to pick a real good full plume here. want it to be pretty long, uh, and what I'm going to do is make sure we're going to cover all this. Take a look. Tie it in so I can get it all the way back uh, over the top of the jointed sections. That'll work pretty good. I'll tie it down right about there. Real good. Got that anchored down. Time for some more legs. Nice thing about these is that they provide a pretty good lateral line tail, and uh, as you do it section by section, uh, the nice thing is, is that it really does kind of just follow um, the whole body of the fly down. So again, side by side, I trap it, pull it back. We'll give it a trim in just a sec. Um, long water line. All right, aqua veil time. Do a little more and build a, again, just build up a nice robust body here. We're closing in on the home stretch for this fly, so we'll build up body just like we did on the previous sections. Pretty good. Got some real good flashy filler in there. All right, last couple steps. We'll take two uh, marabou plumes on this one uh, for as we build up, you know, kind of the shoulders and head of the fly. Uh, so I've got. And like I said on the on that tailing part, just a couple of real good full ones. I'll put them, you know, just side by side. You guys can see. Um, make sure the tips are aligned. Might strip it back just a touch, just to make sure I get some of the junk out of there. And then um, we're gonna tie this in right up top. And carry that down with a few wraps. Looks real good. Let's cut that off. Make sure we don't have too much junk um, right at the eye of the hook where we're going to be. I think that looks real good. Uh, the topping that, that I'll use is just some holographic flashaboo. I use it in the color uh, of orange. I'll just cut off. I mean, for me, I usually use anywhere from uh, 6 to 10 strands of it. I'll cut four to six inches of it and what I'll do is just like we did with the rubber I kind of put it side to side and you can see I'll tie it in up top like this um, get it anchored down kind of close to the top or one side I'll fold it over just so it trails out on the other side um, I don't want it below I'll just have this basically in, in line with where the marabou is get it good and anchored down we're going to add a couple more legs, and then we're going to do some deer hair spinning. Alright. Get that tied in. Looks real good. Last step that we're going to use on this is just uh, your typical dark brown uh, deer hair. 
Um, you know, I'm not going to do like a multi-part collar where I'll tie the tips uh, to make the collar. I, I want this to be relatively messy um, and relatively sparse. So what I'll do is I'm going to cut a chunk of this. Um, depending on how it comes off the hide, I guess is what I would tell you. Um, I think we'll determine whether you got to use the stacker or not, the stuff that I've got on this particular chunk. Um, I think I'm just going to put it in for a sec just to try and get it evened up a touch. And uh, typically what I'll do on these is we'll get the thread in place with where we want this. <clears throat> I like to use, you know, lately I've been using some of that Vivas uh, 50 denier GSP. That's pretty good thread. It doesn't bulk up too much like some of the 100 or 200. Um, you know, any, anything that's strong enough to spin is good. I'll place it in like this near the top or you can try and put it right around as long as you can get it good and flared around it. Um, I don't want a nice tight packed head. What I want is something that, uh, like I said, resembles more of a sloppy head, something I can build some volume with, but certainly not something that's going to create uh, um, more of a flotation issue. Like you look at, you know, I think about a lot of the old muddler minnows I used to see when I was a kid. Boy, those things were so tight that um, you, you couldn't hardly get them to sink unless you had split shot. So uh, fairly loose deer hair head, several turns, a pull back. That looks like it's spread out pretty darn good. Grab a whip. Pull that back just a touch. Try and keep all the junk from getting trapped in there. Looks good. Now I think I've got that spun pretty, pretty well around the rest of the hook. I'll grab the trash can, um, do some angled clipping here. I usually just touch it right on that point of my uh, bead. And I'll just start working my way right around. Nice cone shape to it, um, similar sculpin head type of shape, and I'll work right through it. Again, I don't compact it too awful much, make it too tight. I want to create, like I said, something that pushes some water, but certainly does not keep it from, from sinking. It's a big fly. Um, you want to get it down the deep. and really maximize, I think, um, just what you're making out of a smaller batch of deer hair, you know, so you don't create something that, you know, by the end of the day, you feel like you've been throwing around a wet sock uh, on the end of a seven weight, eight weight rod. So as I finish this up, nice volume has had, good flare to it. sure I untangle this a little bit and, um, and what you got here is a finished product called Public Flasher and Brown. Great triple joint fly uh, somewhere in that uh, five to six inch range. Um, we're going to make this one in a bunch of different colors. Hope you guys enjoy it. Thanks.